I got into a time at VC wherein about a couple of years into my journey, I knew that nothing was going to happen to me. That's, really? That's the reality. And if you've made a two-year business plan, it's been Gigo. It's not made by somebody who really knows the business. What is garbage in, garbage out? Garbage in, garbage out, right? My first round was uh, was a raise of 25 crores. There are 25 crores in your bank. What are you talking about? It's a small thing. It's a small thing. All business heads. We have something called Tan Man Dhan Ki Baat, which is modeled after Narendra Modi Ji's yeah. Man Ki Baat. When I was a VC, I became an entrepreneur for a very simple reason. I thought I could be better than the guy I was funding. Uh, Ashish, I just wanted to kind of, um, uh, before we head into the venture capital part of your journey, right? I think just you made it in the break, you made it uh, very real in terms of examples of your first. <laughs> yeah, I, I was hoping that you won't come up with it. <laughs> I don't forget easily. No, yeah, but, uh, no, but if you can give ranges, because it makes a lot of sense. Uh, and let's not talk in dollar, million or crores, let's just talk in lakhs. Right? What, um, what like 28 year old running large PLs in in your company? Um, what has life become for five him? years in our business has been outstanding ever since the start. Uh, fresher to begin with, 28 year old as he said, triple digits in terms of crores. So uh, triple digit in terms of crores. Yeah, yeah, that's what you can that's get. That's five digits in terms of lakhs. Yeah. You find the right rocket ship. You develop both camaraderie as well as the right to win in your own race. So uh, you'll get there. So. That's incredible. That is incredible. I, I mean, um, so I tell you the next did, batch. Did, did that person imagine when they joined? No. Was was off business their first choice? To be at honest that time? with you, even I didn't imagine. Right. So yeah, the I reality know. is the following. You, I mean, I live to just uh, stay alive for tomorrow. Right. At the end of the day, if tomorrow is better than today, and you take that philosophy for forever in your life, so uh, across five years. You have close to uh, what 1825 days, days yeah. wherein you've been delta lower than the previous one. So uh, that's how we live life. If you ask me, I have never submitted a business plan which is more than a year from where we are today. Never. We've never made a two-year business plan. And if you've made a two-year business plan, it's been Gigo. It's not made by somebody who really knows the business. What is garbage in, garbage out? Garbage in, garbage out, right? <laughs> so only one year. And we only plan for a month. That's it. Because we believe that if you have a very long term view and you end up with a bad month, you will kind of reason to yourself saying, hey, pura saal to hai, dekh lenge. You measure yourself only by the next period that you will step into. And that has to be better than your previous one. And if you don't, then you have to own up to it. You won't believe it. Like last month, we had a terrible month because we, uh, I mean, in all our businesses, we degrew between 2% to 9%. All business heads, we have something called Tan Man Dhan Ki Baat, which is modeled after Narendra Modi Ji's yeah. Man Ki Baat. Tan Man Dhan Ki Baat, yeah. right? Which, uh, where, where uh, I kind of run it every month. We present the results of every single business, every single department. Uh, all of us, because it happened in the company after a really long time. There were about 23 of us who actually came in and said, sorry, we didn't live up to your promise. This is what I did wrong. Because just in a single month, they slipped. There were reasons for it. They, nobody gave reasons. We are not allowed to give reasons. So the reality is that nobody knew. The only philosophy that you hold yourself by is that your next month has to be better. You measure yourself in month on month. I actually heard something when I was, uh, um, I was googling early in my entrepreneurial journey as to why China is so good. Mm. I realized they don't measure themselves month on month. They actually measure themselves week on week. What they told me is that the best companies in China, they measure themselves week on week. Right? And that's the philosophy of the Japanese as well, right? Um, uh, I think it's Kaizen. Industrious, is, very industrious. Which is that your last period has to be um, worse off than your current one. So, so nobody knew. I think compounding. it's the power of compounding. Yeah. It's the power pure of compounding. Comp yeah. Wow. Unbelievable. Unbe by the way, Again, you make it sound obvious and you make it sound easy, but it is not. And I can I can feel myself being conflicted because I think long term a lot. I have a view on brand, for example, which is very long term. I know that brands take time, gestation takes time, there'll be up and down. Seasonality is a very important thing in brands that get built out and so on. Um, but you're right, now that you now that you tell me, it is very easy to get comfort in a bad month if you have a year long view. Yeah. It's very easy to get comfort in a bad quarter if you have a three-year view. Yeah. You have 11 more quarters to go. Yeah. See, when I was in McKinsey, people used to call it the through-cycle view. 
I remember we had a bad year in McKinsey where where some people were, um, I mean, let go from uh, McKinsey, and uh, I I remember then the uh, the office head coming and telling us, hey, why don't you take a through cycle view? What does that mean? Through cycle view means that if you observe McKinsey over a period of five years or whatever three years or some some long term, you will realize that it has really really taken care of you. Please don't measure us in the moment that we are in. I think that's bullshit. I think it's pure bullshit. Only thing that matters is the one that you are in. and it has to be better than the previous moment that we were in and if you do that you get real compounding the reason why that guy landed up with uh, whatever in triple digit crores after 5 years is because every month he was better than his previous month and every single month for the company was actually better than the previous month for a period of 3 and 1/2 years that's the truth or is there inherent seasonality in business there is of course but the job of the businessman is the guy who's leading it he has to make sure that the seasonality is something that doesn't get talked about he has to make sure that the business overrides it so my belief fundamentally is that compounding comes from the fact that you make the period shorter so you have more more periods to compound over yeah. right so uh yeah that's incredible that is incredible i think for founders or optimists it's hard to do because um it is very hard to do it's very very hard it should be hard to do uh, otherwise what's the point right otherwise what's the point i mean what's the jolly right at the end of it <laughs> uh, i mean forget founders i think it's very difficult to do as individuals as well right so so if you're on to something like like i'm on to losing weight right now yeah. i want to lose more weight every single day you measure yourself every day every single day i actually click a picture of mine and i i store it in my in fact i used to have somebody who used to send the picture to so that it actually gets recorded at least in on his whatsapp <laughs> right every like single a business day. fitness coach or something no or no like? no he was a guy i met and who was as uh, you know as uh, fanatic as i was i oh, told really him that really? i met him on like one, one of the drinking sessions between uh, startup drinking session and i told him hey, you look As far as me, why don't we get onto this? Because we are in drinking session yeah. all the time. Yeah, he agreed for it, and when for two months we kept sending pictures to each other. Wow. He lost five, I lost fifteen. The value of measurement is kind of underestimated. I think I completely yes. agree. Just showing the mirror, and hopefully, if there is constructive critique around that mirror, uh, and the critique has to come from within. Yes. I think if you are hoping that somebody like Shantanu will come and tell me, hey, you know what, you should be work, uh, working on these things, and eh, that's a vain thought. It's the Gigo. best guy who knows you. Is you? Yeah. If it comes from outside, it's Gigo. Yeah, it's Gigo. It, anyway, it, it won't work. Amazing. How do you do it? In terms of critique, do you take critique well? By nature, I'm a stubborn individual, okay. and I have tremendous faith in my intellect. Um. However, so I have to respect the person it's coming from. Even if the critique is right, but the person if it's coming from, I don't respect, or I think is not smart enough. I I I and this I'm I'm self aware about this weakness I will ignore it. What about the other way? You like the guy but the, not the critic. No, if I like the guy I will even if I disagree with the critic I will You'll think take about it. it. I will take it and I will think about it and I may disagree with it but um uh I am very optimistic about life in general, right? Uh so if I have a if I have a I'm someone who gets very comfortable with worst case scenarios very quickly. So if a bad and which is a, a in great it can be a great skill or a great intrinsic and it can be a shitty intrinsic also because it can be great if you want someone to stay calm through shit and i'm very calm through the worst news um because i've already made myself comfortable with worst case scenario you know like for example because uh, you've thought about i thought about it already okay if this happens i'll be okay uh but what should not happen as a result of that is that you uh uh wed yourself to suboptimal outcomes more than you should but that's the risk anyways right? that's the risk anyways matlab with the thought yes that is that is a huge risk and so i have to really balance this that getting comfortable with worst case outcomes is one thing so you don't lose your shit but at the same time you must you must be thrashing around in the deep end of the pool to stay alive and make the best out of it all the time and that is something so i have to make sure because i do that personally but i need to make sure that that attitude which is the latter attitude is the one that disseminates not the former right because in a review if someone gives me bad news i'm very calm about it so people get the sense that this is simply okay to do 
but i have to make sure like deepak in fact deepak is someone who told who told me that don't be zen about things that are unacceptable yeah in front of me it's fine in front of the team it just doesn't work yeah. you must show emotion you must get angry don't hide it so that is something which i have tried i'm like i don't know some people here who know me but like i would never get angry in reviews or never lose my cool or whatever and i've been told that at least with senior folks start doing it more often but do you do that in personal life or not no you got it there too not got it i just i'm i'm a very chill human being i'm a very chill human being like i really really feel that being happy and being chill and being calm and just having like zen is the nice way to live which is not good for entrepreneurs who are trying to disrupt or kind going to go into that big gap that you see right <laughs> it's a bad attitude to have and i realize it very honestly i realize ki yaar ye galat hai i should not be this and no, there, are, there are advantages of it there are definitely there are definitely are advantages you people are free around you people feel empowered people take risks a lot more people are very in my company till date i have not said no to a budget uh, a request that has come which has been thought through well till date even if it is way outside what i think is is budgeted for if you have thought about it if you have passed the stress test in terms of like if you have passed the stress test from 3 4 senior people you will put money behind what you think is a great idea it could be a product launch it could be a business idea it could be women's business yaar women's business was launched in may of 2020 it's a covid year where a men's personal care business launching women's razors by far completely contradictory idea but we like 15 women we are working in bombay shaving company we have hair on our legs this is ridiculous waxing salon sab band hai hum ye kya hai we like we don't we don't make this so we don't understand no say we understand them na you don't need to understand them we understand them we are employees let us work with the manufacturer made the first razor then made 10 more products but unko utna hi ahda milta hai do they get that same kind of status as as but we we will let them do it we, we made a product team and now they're running their own business they have their own e-shop pool they have their own everything everything is made for that business and she is here i don't know she she was here before she is part of the marketing team at in this business so outside yeah so that's 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 but again it's it's, uh, it's different it's, it's different you don't know right what's right what's wrong yeah, and you yeah, learn yeah, along yeah. the way and you know I'm 35. Yeah, like I don't know. This is the first time I'm being an entrepreneur. I talk to people like you and I learn. Today from today, I'll learn some ten things from you about how to be a salesperson, etc. I'll try to become better. But it's a journey. I don't think it's something that you know. There's never a right answer. It's always gray. There's never white and black. I'm just a gray guy. I have to kind of figure out where you're comfortable. Because if you're not consistent, you're fucked. Yeah. My view is one day you can be Ashish. Next day you can be Rohit Kapoor. Third day you'll be Rahul Chaudhary. Fourth day you'll be Vinita Singh. And then you've lost it. You'll never remain. who you are and that's what you need to be for 10 years because and you have brand a build over deck centuries not only decades centuries colgate is a 200 year old form like it is a 200 year old form they have gone through people and generation and so on so the company has to outlast me so is do you have an aspiration ki isko jaldi karna hai bada karna hai jaldi karna hai bada karna hai dono but sahi se relatively bada karna is more important okay i have a more long term view on the business I believe that brands take time. I believe that brands take. I, I believe falling falling in love is a in, is a commitment process. Brands will succeed only when consumers fall in love with you. And today it's harder than ever before because there is just so much attention deficit. There is just so many options. Consumers are on phone. कभी इधर कभी उधर कभी IPL देख रहे हैं कभी कुछ कभी कुछ. So for them to fall in love with you in the Tinder age. It will take a long time, and it's fine. We'll give consumers time, we'll, but we have to be honest to the. When we go on a date with the consumer, those two minutes in the morning when they're shaving with a razor, it has to be the best two minutes, because they're harder to engage. So they they must be pleased as as quickly as possible. When you have the chance, take up take your best shot. That's the view. But it will still take more time than, for example, what would happen in nineties or two thousands, where it was easier for companies. the modes to brand building were much much higher so if you had capital there weren't too many options anyway no option nahi tha distribution of media was very very restricted so newspaper mein tha tv pe tha radio pe tha so only cadbury's and aur ek baar aapne bana diya to todna bahut mushkil hai bahut mushkil hai distribution mein consumers come and ask 
Yeah. Till date, Cadbury is synonymous with uh, chocolate. Chocolate. Till date, Colgate is synonymous with toothpaste. You can't break it. Patanjali has done a fabulous job with it, uh, and of course, Kit Kat and Nestle. But again, needed a lot of money, you know, to break Cadbury's hold. So yes. I believe so again in my business, brand gestation takes a long time. But I agree with you. Today, if we are, if we are lax, or if we are comfortable with failure beyond the point, we will fail mm. irreversibly. That's the risk of having that's a long-term view. Yeah, that's a huge risk, and we have to imbibe some of what you're saying today, which is week on week, be unhappy. When you, when I heard you talk about tracking to plan, right, I was blown away because we always underhit our budget by five percent, eight percent, nine percent, always. And I console myself by saying we are being aspirational. How many target? बहुत बड़ा लिया और we tried to get ninety two percent, ninety three percent, ninety four percent, and I'm happy about it. I'm like, no, yar, that means either we are setting it wrong. Or we're not trying hard enough. There's no third option on this one. So that's like, but lo- lots of them. Uh, Ashley, I want to come to like a different, different topic on 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 entrepreneurship, right? which is around venture capital. Because you've been there for five years, you spent large time vulture capital <laughs> in in in, uh, in in one of India's most storied and most successful venture capital firms. Um, uh, have a like, you know, I wanted to just kind of step back and. Talk about last venture capital has been in India for last fifteen, eighteen years. Right? Yeah. Do you think it has been a successful industry? No. Say more about that. Uh, you want to know why they haven't been successful? Why do you think they weren't? They weren't designed to be that way. I personally think that first of all, if you look at the VC industry globally, how was it made? The way it was made is that successful entrepreneurs actually came in after they had finished their entrepreneurial careers. and had a passion to actually go and develop young entrepreneurs to get to where their passions were this is the global vc model whether you take germany you take us you take china you actually find that people at the top are experienced entrepreneurs that was not the case with india in india it was more a model of saying that hey there are these great investment bankers great consultants from the most blue chip companies as they get unko le lo ye gadha mazuri karenge और ये तुमको बेस्ट कंपनी ढूंढ के लाएंगे और ये अपना जनरलिस्ट स्किल्स लगाएंगे और उस कंपनी को बड़ा कर देंगे आई थिंक बाय डिजाइन वी हैड वेरी फ्यू ऑन्ट्रप्रनोर्स हू स्टार्टेड वी सी बिजनेस और फॉर दैट मैटर वी प्रॉबली हैड जीरो ऑन्ट्रप्रनोर्स हु आर वेरी बिग दम सेल्स हु एक्चुअली स्टार्ट वेरी बिग बिजनेस बाई डिजाइन वी सी इंडस्ट्री वॉज इन इंडिया नाउ इट्स चेंजिंग नाउ इट्स चेंजिंग वाई एंड इट्स चेंजिंग इन अदर वे डायरेक्शन आई मीन इन द अदर डायरेक्शन वेर इन लॉर्ड ऑफ successful entrepreneurs are becoming angel investors that's where it's changing it's not changing the vc model. yeah right so so i think by design the kind of people who were there were very different right it was more the generalist people who were ahead of others in the society the top 1 percentile of the successful people around were actually becoming vcs mm-hmm. so that's one the second thing is vc industry started in india at a time when india india's top decile was not growing that fast yeah you did not have the great uh, businesses which were kind of compounding every single month uh, you did not have tech penetration to begin with you did not have the infrastructure across many other offline businesses that they could just take off you did not have the brands uh, that that you can speak of today so they actually started in an era wherein there was a lot of promise of what could happen rather than the infrastructure being there i think that's the second big reason that vc was not that great a business to begin with and i think third is is in indians don't believe in the power of compounding except a few businesses when in, you see a company in india if it grow i mean especially one that is 20 years old right at least in the 80s or the 90s or maybe in the early 2000s if it was growing bigger there will be some people who will actually grow out branch out yeah and kind of start their own business correct so there was always this inherent fear of fragmentation of inner self actually fragmenting into becoming you know competitors of oneself correct so i think the industry itself had not really changed in india we did not have i mean if you look at uh, i was in matrix right in to, between 2006 when matrix was founded matrix india was founded to let's say 2016 how many how many unicorns did india have likely four or five less than five yeah yeah four or five uh, yeah. unicorns were they growing that fast no they weren't so i think by design 
whether it is from the market side or from how the people were you know kind of uh, in the kind of people who went there my sense was that it was not a great business equities is a great business you make more money yeah. from equities like we uh, spoke about it earlier in the conversation than ever from your pnl correct uh, ability right so but it was not designed to be successful that's my sense i i speak this out of experience because i know what happened when see i was a healthcare investor i was a healthcare services investor one bad year and all your gains you, you used to get washed off and the infrastructure in india wasn't there that you could actually grow month on month or year on year yeah. and i'll tell you one big one big um, insight that i came up with was that the best people in india actually wanted to be a vc they did not want to be entrepreneurs entrepreneurs that's very surprising now right? yeah i think the vc was a great model because you know the the great guys in your batch want, uh, wanted to become vcs they were probably richer they were probably making more money than being built out of a passion i think vcs are businesses that are built out of passion i i am an angel investor and so are you i'm pretty sure the reason i invest at least mai is pay invest karta hu ki bhai mere ko maza aaya us bande mere ko chahiye ki wo bahut bada aadmi bane when i invest in a guy i believe that that guy if he becomes big i'll be happy it's very passion it's a very passion led thing and it's not to, to do with money but yeah i think that was missing in this is when, yeah. when i saw it was too calculative it was too analytical yeah it was not very intuitive and that's because of the people that were there yeah. so i was thinking you're absolutely right i think i think the lack of entrepreneurs in the venture capital even today by the way even today yeah. the number it's of changing but very slowly first of all i think on Indian entrepreneurs. I I don't know about American entrepreneurs. I think in in the US, people like life like big lifestyle shifts, right? Yeah. So they want to leave the they want to leave the hustle, the hacking, the growth, the pressure. And venture capital is a good, well-paying, respectful. You stay close to the ecosystem, so it's a good post-entrepreneurial journey. I think it's a horrible pre-entrepreneurial journey. Yeah, because you're too close. Like I, I'm assuming you became an entrepreneur because you were. It's the twelfth man syndrome, right? you're giving drinks and you're you're a good player you're extremely intelligent and you're clearly among the smartest in your batch and so on but you aren't playing the game and you aren't making the money and you aren't hiring the people and you aren't creating value and you aren't in the papers you're all it's it's just capital facility for, for, for a black or better word it's it's brokerage of capital at a no i tell you my story when i was a vc i became an entrepreneur for a very simple reason i thought i could be better than the guy i was funding very simple <laughs> Mm-hmm. and oh, i was a analytical guy huh. uh so i actually reasoned it out to myself that hey there are these 10 reasons why i can't find a reason against it that's the reality yeah i was funding the guy i thought he is doing a poorer job than what i could do right and uh, i saw a gap it was never the other way around i never really at least maybe it's, it's a function of the sector that i was in but uh-huh. reality is that i never made a lot of guys and i got inspired by them I always thought that hey you know what there are these gaps and maybe I can do it better. Right. That's very interesting because most VCs I talk to like um they're in awe of founders who are successful. Yeah that's true. Maybe I didn't fund and a founder who was successful. <laughs> no you are a very good investor. I I I, I refuse to believe that but I also I I accept that you would have said that I could have done this better. But I think that's the that's the issue right I think and VCs are um personally hey, they are in awe of investors. I I take that straight. Right, yeah, yeah. and of yeah. good founders. More, more, most VCs are founders first, any which ways, right? Yeah. So. No, they're not. Fa- VCs want to be founders first, but they are selective founders first. That's true. The founders that are extraordinary, they're and which is for good reason. Founders that don't give them returns, they will not be found. They though they will not be first in their pecking order. It should be that way. And absolutely, I think they have fiduciary duty to their to their investors and so on. But I do feel that the industry, venture capital in India, has, in my view. backed future cash flow with a hedge that is far more optimistic than yeah than it has turned out yeah yeah we don't have uh, other than off business dream 11 and maybe one or two more mama earth boat ha consumer brands of course with the margin profile but again boat boat struggled to raise capital for a really long time. and and if you talk to aman <laughs> he said the fact that i make profit sucks when i want to raise money It's far easier to raise capital for a loss-making business than it is for a profit-making business because people love to see the promise of future cash flow, which is at a much more multiplier. 
as opposed to a steady business that is taking share away from Sony and Bose and Harman Kardon online. And people are just finding reasons to not back it. Yeah. But you're right. I think large unicorns which have been, uh, which have prom- pay- played to the promise of future cash flow are few and far between for years. Like you now we have seen IPOs which are kind of, of course the market is what it is. But it's not played out across sectors. Where you look at hospitality, you look at, um, you know, you look at e-commerce, you look at travel, you look at, um, uh, it's not, it's, it's also, not played out, for it's sure. It's not played out, right? Profit pools are not there yet. Like you assume that at some point the consumption story in India would reach a point where consumers will pay more money and then company X will probably be at a 10-15% pat or whatever. But it's not played out and I think... Uh, that's the problem. And what has happened, and I've heard a lot of VC say this, that you'll fund a high growth negative 15% EBITDA business over a moderate growth positive EBITDA 10% business any day. Because, because, and here is the, here is where I find it very, very co- conflicting for me to hear, because the latter will find it hard to get investors in the future. Moderate growth does not attract good investments but I find that hard to believe because private equity loves like late my state, thought around huh, so I, don't, I don't get this like I don't know why I don't know why that bridge from a series B series C which is high growth break even to a series D series E from a fit, like a prudent investor in private equity who wants to take an operating majority stake for example they know that that bar that, that, that journey is not a very long one so why would you not why would, you, why, why would you prioritize a high growth negative margin business? Even today you are seeing that happen, right? My sense is because of a very simple thing. I think that investors don't have options. They have to either take a guy who is high growth with negative EBITDA or take a guy who is low growth with high EBITDA. They don't have the option of taking a guy who is high growth and high EBITDA. And the reason for that is because at the end of the day, they are funding entrepreneurs who again have this trade-off. I think it's a, it's, it's, it's a reflection of who we are as entrepreneurs or who we are as young businessmen that we actually don't aspire for both. I'll tell you my personal view. Mm. Both of them are necessary. Both of them are not sufficient if individually done. Yeah. And most people don't think like that. They will say, hey, hey if I have to grow, then I have to lose money. Yeah. I think like that. I don't think like that. Yeah. I, you're right. And I need to change that. No, whether yeah. I have demonstrated it or not doesn't matter. But the way I think about it is growth is necessary, so is profit. And if there are not many people who think like that, there are not many options who do both. And hence, there is a huge majority of capital which is actually chasing people who do either that or the, or the other one. I think there are not many options and that the, the reason for that yeah, is so because true. young businessmen in India today kind of are not convinced about the fact that both can actually happen hand in hand. Both can go together. And the reason for that, in my opinion, is that there is not, there is no single fundamental way of actually, you know, doing business the right way. People think about it saying that, hey, there's this large market, let me do it. <laughs> People, there is this large guy, let me disrupt him. Right? Or there is this large unmet need, let me go and kind of create a business around it. But hey, the moment you've said that all that large is good, which actually leads to growth, but at the end of the day, you have to make money. I think people fundamentally don't believe that growth, and this, when I'm saying people, I'm talking about businessmen, entrepreneurs, or people in their corporate academic life and stuff like that. They, they actually don't believe that both can go hand in hand. And hence, the, you know, the entire ecosystem has played out that way. When I talk to a lot of uh, people who are angels, uh, who I'm angels in, they, they actually don't believe it. I try to force it in them saying that, hey, it can happen. <laughs> yeah. They, they say it's an utopian world. It probably doesn't happen, right? Yeah. Uh, but if you look at it, even 50 years ago, there were businesses that were getting created that actually grew for a little bit of time with, with profit. As long as you believe that, you can make it. I think that belief is missing in us as individuals. We think that what will happen? If you do one, then it will not happen. If you do it, then it will not happen. But reality is it can happen. You need to put in some effort around it. You need to really believe in it. I think belief is missing. That's my sense. 
Yeah, because I will tell you, when I was a in, investor in healthcare entrepreneurs, I actually saw a few people who believed in God, but they were in absolute minority, absolute absolute minority. Did they struggle to disagree with shareholders or board or VCs? To no, say, I will. Pra- में आता है. पहले तो उनके अंदर ही belief नहीं होता. यार entrepreneur को पता नहीं होता ना कि क्या बोलना चाहिए. Where will I get evaluated? To be honest, for a long time, I felt. that i had to measure all my words very carefully otherwise the belief in my company will go down because of my focus on lower growth for example no that's because you reason to yourself that way there was always the option to be just the opposite what would you have lost you would have lost your company you were too young anyways you were in your early 30s what would have happened at the end of the day in india we really don't have fearless entrepreneurs who can actually you know to your point i believe that in india while we have this great entrepreneurial breed but they actually fear at the deep so inside true. they fear they're not as fearless as they should be or they can be or they would be if they were in a different world fearlessness is something that is missing what you just said is an is a is, a, is an epitome of fear right? yeah. i personally think that the at the very base of it you thought about losing something and yeah. hence you were like that. i think fearlessness is missing in india i am not a very fearless guy i actually think that hey you know what I, there is a valuation that i have created there is a lifestyle that i have created mm. i am also not a very fearless guy but when i see people that i idealize and i i see what they talk about it it streams of fearlessness give me examples of people of of, of this nature yeah. uh, political leaders who come and say that they will slay the other country i really like them <laughs> <laughs> It is, it is true. I mean, when I see people with ambitions of saying that, hey, you know what? I'm going to take millions under me, and they'll follow me to uh, great gurus. Yeah. I really like them. I think the kind of stuff they speak about, I can't do that in front of an audience. Um, great sports persons when they yeah. when they kind of, you know, um, just take on the number one player in the world and they'll just go all out. I yeah. think that's fearlessness for me. Sport uh, is a fantastic. Yeah, I think it's a fantastic proxy for entrepreneurship in general. Like I think the there's a lot to learn from sports. Yeah, anyways. I I remember your LinkedIn post about the tennis players, and I think to this point, the U.S. Open final, I think between Djokovic and Federer, where Djokovic was like I think four match points, or three match points against Federer, and he hit that one backhand winner where he he went for the line, and the match changed after that, and the match changed, yeah. and he won it, and what it takes to play that shot is a combination of fearlessness is i think people will trivialize fearlessness as someone who will enter the cage of a lion in a zoo and come back out that's not fearlessness fearlessness is putting it all on the line and having an innate innate confidence that it won't you won't lose it and 20 years of hard work yeah of yeah. having done the same across 20 years in practice and having gotten it right a significant amount of time i agree man i think venture capital also like i think um it's tough to make money as a vc i i will be honest about it individually or as a fund or as a as a, as a collection of funds it's easier as a fund it's easier as a individual it's tougher as a fund because because two because two 220 finally, or something or like something else well not of the 220 i think the law of averages finally play out mm-hmm. so if you're in a fund there will always be you know two people making money and the 10 not making money right and hence you are kind of averaging it out if you are an individual also you'll invest in 10 portfolio companies and two will do very well it's yeah. it's tough to make money especially where the return expectations are so high out of you it's like saying you're born to mr sunil gavaskar yeah and you have to make more than 10122 runs in test cricket so yeah, <laughs> returns are very high a vc is expected to make more than 20% a year That's crazy. The son of Gavaskar, right? So, son of Gavaskar. I mean, he couldn't make it big. He's a talented guy in his in his own right. Yeah, that is crazy. Also, what I what ends up happening is the two out of ten in the VC portfolio get tremendous attention, capital and otherwise. Huh. And eight out of ten, each of for each of whom their entire business is their entire world is their business. Yeah. But for the VC, it's one out of ten. Yeah. And it's a write off. Yeah. and i've seen so many entrepreneurs who know that they are being written off by their investor because they have two other people to kind of back more so you don't get backing you don't get that pro rata commitment and then it just changes your your own confidence in your own business 
And but that's how the world is. That guy should exit. What he's doing. See, the world world is extremely capitalist. I didn't. By the way, huh? I didn't. You you didn't. I bought out my investor who didn't believe in me. You are one in a million. And to be honest with you, to actually expect somebody to be like you is is expecting too much. Frankly, uh, the world is about haves and have nots. If you are not getting that much attention, you are likely doing something wrong. Turn it around, or, or just quit and do, start doing something. But why do I, if I am frank six out of ten, and I need more time, why do I hinge my destiny on your fund mathematics? I agree, I agree, but that's a way of reasoning. Nobody has time. If somebody is telling you you are out of time, you are likely out of time. If you have more time than he does, I am not out of time on my terms. No, I am out of time on your fund maths. No, that that means your time is too too lengthy, in my opinion. Or my I'm not my view is very simple. My view is that when you are being measured and found to be wanting, you have to change it. Simple. What if what I'm being measured by is not the metrics I would like? I'd like to reason it out with the guy. I don't think, by the way, venture capital metrics on quarter on quarter growth are healthy for. Mine is month on month. Your business may be you put a higher bar on your business huh. because of the nature of the business. Because I don't think, by the way, that natural growth of all business is the same. Some think, business, in my opinion, and venture that's capital requires a certain, certain, certain rate of growth. And some businesses grow higher than that. Some business, and some founders grow higher. I would refuse to believe that everyone fits the same metric. Ha! Huh. I agree, but all I'm trying to tell you is, uh, is when a vested interest guy, because he's invested in you, of course, right? Who likely is also joined at the hip because of a variety of reasons Correct. and he believes that you should be doing something good at it is likely a reason that you should invest in at the very minimum agree that i agree at the maximum you should beat him to uh, what he's saying fully agree I, I, in my opinion the world is very competitive everything is a race you just run right <laughs> i mean running 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 run. agree agree okay but the fact that the person on the board may not have run a business Huh. Does that make you question their ability to define metrics that makes sense? No, it tells me that his question is right, but the solution is does not reside in him. The solution I have to come up with. If a guy has not run a business, I actually give him the uh, benefit of doubt that he'll come up with the right question because he is likely not seen it from the same lens that I'm going to. But I have to come up with the solution. But if the guy has run a business, I actually look up to him for to give me a solution. That's my only difference. So you respect the question, but you put the. But I don't, of don't have any expectations answer. on the answer. Interesting. But if there is a question being put out on me by somebody who has who is joined at the hip with me, meaning that if I do well, he, he does, does well, well, yeah, and if I sink, he drowns as well. Yes, right. So in that case, I will always respect the question, because if I disrespect his question, then I'm basically giving a reason to justify why I shouldn't be doing better. Yeah, that's suicidal, right? In a way, that's suicidal. In a way. Yeah, that's that to do it over every single question takes execution ability. It takes enormous faith in yourself that you can actually execute on all of them. मेरे को लगता है कोई भी आपको ये कह रहा है कि आपको ये करना चाहिए. अगर आपको लगता है कि देखो भैया ऐसा है ये बंदा जो है आपके हित में ही सोच रहा है क्योंकि उसका भी हित उसके लिए. Correct. Incentives are aligned. That I agree. And we see that. At, at, a, at a fundamental level, he's an equity shareholder in your company. Means that he's joined at the hip, which means that he raises the right question. He may not have the answer, and hence I may not have respect for who he is, but I have to respect his thought. I have always believed so. I think a VC raises the right questions. A team member comes up with the right answers. If a team member is raising questions, it's likely not a team member. He is not a believer. A VC is trained to not believe. Really, that's interesting. I, that's. I was never trained to believe. You know, one of the big things that <laughs> so when cynic I'm, at the very core. No, not a cynic. Uh, 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 VC asked me to be a cynic. So when I joined in VC, I was always told that, hey, you know what? You are one with rosy tinted glasses. You कुछ भी देखते हो तुम्हें लगता कि अच्छा है. So become a cynic. So VC is trained to ask questions. You remember the time you would ask me to join Matrix? Yeah, yeah. you didn't even <laughs> respond to it. <laughs> no, I did. We had we had a we had you, a conversation. Never had one. 
only when I told you that, hey, I have dropped the idea of the fact that you should be joining Matrix is when you actually had you know a chat. You what I thought? Here is how ignorant I am. When I went to B-School, I had no idea what McKinsey was. I had no idea what McKinsey was. I was fresh out of NIT Nagpur. NIT Nagpur was not, a, not the best engineering college, to be honest. Um, I am Lucknow happened. When McKinsey would recruit like one or two people a year. So it was always like the top ranker, top two ranker. I was academically poor. I was I believe. below, no, I was below average, below medium. I was below, not because of, I think because of lack of effort more than, and interest more than anything else. I don't think it was like I tried and I couldn't do it. If I think I put my mind into it, I would have done it. But McKinsey happened very, 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 like very coincidentally, right? I, uh, I got, uh, I realized much later when I was recruiting many years later for McKinsey in I am Lucknow in three years, four years down the line when I was campus. Uh, whatever. Captain. Captain or whatever. That um, my shortlist was pushed by uh, Suhail and a couple of other people who said hey, this guy looks like an interesting human being. Then the interviews, I did not have a single EM or AP interview. I only had three senior partner interviews back to back. So there were no cases. I got through McKinsey without a single case interview. So I got in very, very randomly. Um, uh, uh, so, sorry, I forget where the story was going. Where do we start? I forget as well. Oh, sorry. Yeah. About the Matrix interview, right? So, yeah. yeah, yeah oh, right, Matrix right. interview. Yeah, yeah. I, I pinged you and you did. Till I told you that I... Uh, yeah, yeah. So, I did yeah. not know Matrix as a VC firm. I, did not, I knew VC as a broad term. I was a associate at the firm. I genuinely thought... And this, I'm a, I don't know if I've admitted this to you before. Cellular company, Matrix. Yeah. So, I thought Matrix was that SIM card company at yeah. airports. And I was like, what is this... this outstanding McKinsey guy. I've heard so much about what's he doing at this SIM card company. I was like, maybe it must be very large. He must be the CEO or whatever. And then I, there was not like, it yeah. was not easy to Google things yeah. very quickly and figure yeah. it out. Right. So I didn't, I didn't put in the effort, but I think later on when I realized, uh, uh, I, I, I felt fairly stupid. I think when Tarun joined, joined Matrix, that was my batch, Bamra. Yeah. Uh, he was my batch, right. Uh, and he's ironically started a healthcare business he, uh, he and I used to do healthcare in Matrix. Ha, so he's started Orange Health and yeah. uh, doing fairly well and so on. So, um, but yeah, I think, yeah, I think on VC, you know, like, I just feel that, that venture capital is a very American concept. It's a very American DNA concept that, um, you know, pump a lot of capital into extraordinary founders and see them make a lot of returns um, by being ruthless, mercenary, grabbing consumer share and so on, right? Um, with whatever the industry, healthcare or whatever, right? I don't think that it, is, it has panned out in the Indian context. I think it's an American concept that hasn't done well with the Indian, either the founder mentality or the market market reality. Founder mentality is different in Intel. Like it's very different, right? Like you put a lot of money in a young IIT guy's bank account. You don't know. Very honestly, you don't know whether the prudence for deploying that is there. And even if it is there, you don't know whether that is that. And that's the issue with private equity in India in general, right? Private equity has struggled to deploy capital in India because promoters were just not, the appetite was never there. But I actually think differently. I think it came Same. earlier to India than when it should have. So you think timing was the issue? Timing was the issue. See, in my opinion, the the US VCs actually mm. flew uh, completely out of whack in the late 70s. And in se late 70s, US was going through a period of turmoil in the sense that technology was becoming a bigger part of lives than they used to be. Mm. Second, US rate of growth between 75 to 95 was far higher than the previous couple of Correct. 20 uh, years. Correct. So, in general, I think the country was inflecting and the VC became a catalyst to that inflection. Hmm. I think VCs came to India at a time when we weren't ready for that growth. Most of the you know bigger VCs of today came to India between 2002 to 2010. Yeah. Okay. The median being 2005, 6 years. And then we weren't really ready for growth. I mean, if you remember 2006, what was happening is uh, we had the first 
Congress government of Manipur. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that was a period of real stagnation. There, there wasn't too much investment in infrastructure. Yeah. We had really, I mean, we had a great time during uh, the 99 to 2004 years. So yeah. the country was not really investing. Yeah. While we were talking about, you know, all the internet and all that penetration going up, but these years were not that great. I think it's in the late 2010s is when really it started blooming. Maybe around 2014, 15 mark, which is when Geo was founded, for example, yes. right? So I think. VCs just came in early. They came in early at a time uh, and there was no option. They had to come in early because in India, the HNIs don't really go and invest in companies. Yeah. See, America for that matter, Germany for that matter, even Australia for that matter, most of the rich individuals actually invested in companies and made their own ecosystems. Around. Agree. Whereas in India, there was, a, there was a phase of community investing. There was never an individual going and investing in people that they thought were similar to them. It's more community investing, caste investing, religion investing, Sindhis investing in themselves, Marwadis investing in, in similar societies, Jainis investing in similar societies and stuff like that. That's I think so true. Or And public equities are so lucrative, right? Yeah, public equities are so lucrative. That's also true. So I think VCs came in so very early and they had to because there was no other stream of capital coming in and spurring entrepreneurship for that matter any which ways, right? So VCs had to create the market, right? So... Uh, they were the market creators and hopefully they'll be the market followers as well. Because I think the real competition that they have today uh, is from angels and from uh, and from promoters because they can put in a lot of money. So, so that's my feeling. I don't think they, so obviously they were not armed right because they didn't have the skill sets and probably uh, the Indian entrepreneurs were also not ready as well. But they just were early. I got into a time at VC wherein about a couple of years into my journey, I knew that nothing was going to happen to me. That's, really? That's the reality. What have you had like a couple of unicorns as, 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 as the There were four investor. unicorns in the country uh, when I was like two years into my VC journey. So I couldn't have had two any which way. So <laughs> the market wasn't ready. No, would it have changed my profile? Yes. See, I... I believe in real money. The real money wasn't there in the uh, the eco, uh, startup ecosystem any which was back then. As a VC? As a VC, as, even in the startup ecosystem. Today, you have successful companies who actually make money at the same time they are growing, right? So, I don't think they existed back then. There were a few. I remember Mu Sigma was one. Mm. Um, yeah, Mu Sigma was one. I don't think Inmobi was making money back then. This is 2000. 11, 12, 12, 13 maybe. Yeah. yeah. Movie was not it was just too early. You are so right. But you look at you, you look at companies that were created by um, family capital at that time. Like look at Yes Bank for example. Or RBL. Or some of these businesses that were just out of the reach of VCs in a way because well funded and so on. So people were able to deploy capital for returns in very fundamentally strong ways um, in certain segments. I think VC just didn't have access. VC, VC's access was to young entrepreneurs who didn't have their own capital, who were doing tech-based businesses. And I think that's where the bets became a little skewed. That's where failure yes, became more Yes, but common. that's early stage. I will tell you uh, during that time, for example, Chris Capital was very successful. Chris mm. Capital took the early growth stroke growth mentality to actually build businesses. Correct. Right? During that time, Warburg was very successful. Airtel was one of the first. Airtel, um, this uh, Page Industries. Correct. I think a lot of what Warburg did was early growth to growth as well. So, my sense is that we get a we get colored a lot. Of, uh, our VC view is very much the early stage VC view, whereas yeah. a lot of uh, I would say late stage companies made a made a good amount of return at that point in time at larger scale, which right. they today don't do because early stage guys are ruling the roost, right? So, Correct. but the the scales were tilted way more in the late stage to early growth favor. Right? Right. That brings back like. That, that I think should underline the very clear, if you were to make a choice between profitability and growth. Profitability, any day. That, it's absolutely clear. And I don't think that will change, by the way, basis, fund life cycles or growth rates in any way. I don't think that will ever change. I think the whole concept of backing growth at any cost is problematic, not only for the VC returns ecosystem, but also for incentivizing bad behavior in founders. 
But tell me, do they have an option? Can they select a profitable company? Because I would they much, make money out of growth anyway. I would much rather have 6 out of 10 profitable companies in a portfolio of 10, which are making 10% EBITDA and 30% year on year growth. By the way, which is exactly the principle that private equity uses. They are much more selective, much more conservative and maybe have a smaller portfolio. But the same playbook can be applied to earlier stage businesses because there is no reason unless, unless it's WhatsApp. Hey boss, I will not make money but I will change the world. So those need to be exceptional cases as businesses. I agree, I agree with that. You cannot say that, that is 8 out of 10. That has to be like one-off investment you make. But otherwise, then you will make lower returns per company, for example, on average. But I think you will be more successful as an industry and you will probably back the better founders. Since you are an angel, what kind of companies have you bought? I like consumer brands. But on the profitability versus growth. Consumer brands horizon. by nature have great margin profiles. So you would, uh, you have Personally, selected profit. And it's tiered, right? Huh? Always. Large markets, large markets, monopolized non-agile market leaders where there is no innovation and a good founder who has a hypothesis of a differentiated product because by the time they've reached product and PMF and so on, like they're not available to angels at least value doesn't exist right but for me if you have a large market you have a monopolized leader who's not innovated and you seem to know what to do with that base space i will back it because in general consumer brands have good margin profiles so i'll back it you get a lot of them yeah man which is good for me because i feel not good for me i think it's good because i think there are a lot of founders who are now seeing the the large gap on the road in katak <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying? Like they're they're seeing that. This now. example is going to stick with yeah, you. Yeah, it, it, absolutely. <laughs> because I'm going to make a move for it. I don't care if I scratch my car a little bit. I'll pay for it later. But I'm going to make a move. And, and that's cool. Because I, I think I love that entrepreneurs are getting. I'm amazed. And this takes me to the next topic, right? Which is entrepreneurs today amaze me, man. Amaze me. That 22-year-old straight out of Bitspilani, commercially fucking astute. Can you imagine being 22 and knowing how to present a working capital plan, knowing how PNL looks, talking about hiring the best team, how will you deploy capital? Like, talking about that stuff today, it's off the. T- I was 22. I was a. I was completely a noob, and that's how evolution works. Darwin says that you know you need to kind of uh, build out that way. But I think in, I'm 35. That 22, 13 years. But I think it's just amazing. So. If you were an entrepreneur today and you you have six years of experience as an entrepreneur, of course, before that as an investor and a consultant and you've kind of been been at the pinnacle of all the centers of excellence you aspired for. (laughs) Too much to say, but yeah. No, no, but think about it, right? You went to IIT, center of excellence for engineering graduates. Whether you were a great engineer or not doesn't matter. Like, I don't know. But I'm assuming that... I was good in NACADs. Ah, you cleared (laughs) exams very well, right? (laughs) Then, Then you went to ITC, which is like the best place to go for an IIT grad. Then you went to ISV, the best B school in the country. Then you went to McKinsey, blue chip, like the best consulting firm. Then you went to Matrix, the top tier. You went to the center of excellence in every phase of your career and now you're a unicorn founder. <coughs> but I still think that if you were to think about the entrepreneur of tomorrow, it will be very different from you and probably better in a yeah. lot of ways. Right? So, how would you how would you urge them to think bigger than what you have thought over the last six years? What like if you if if you were to make them more audacious than you, this is a big bar by the way. Like I'm I am nowhere close to your bar of, aud- of audacity. But if you were to think about even raising that bar, what where would you kind of ask them to focus? I think Miriko ye lagta hai ki, you know you have the highest chances of being successful if you are yourself. I think audacity for me in this world is about being yourself for the most amount of time because the world forces you to be somebody else, right? So, in my opinion, I was probably 80% of the time I was uh, being myself, right? I think raising the bar is is probably 90, maybe 100, just being yourself. I think the highest chances of, forget an entrepreneur, the highest chances of being successful as an individual or for that matter, even an institution, is if you are yourself. 
you don't want to change you believe that that's what is going to make you successful you forget when people there are naysayers around you you just ignore and you just keep going i think in my opinion in my own journey professional and academic i think i've still changed I still tried to adapt i've still tried to you know kind of make sense of when people have given me inputs you know today even today uh, less or so today maybe over a period of 6 7 years i've got more confident of saying hey you know my style works for me at least <laughs> right <laughs> so but but if i take a through cycle view as the mckinsey <laughs> consultants <says. laughs> good point good time to take the through cycle view through cycle view i think over a period of 5 years i uh, probably adjusted 20% of the time i think if i had this wisdom 6 years back i wouldn't change that's my best chance when i have changed i have always been suboptimal i think it's true for every individual in whatever vocation give an example of when you changed and you felt ki yaar i regretted that yeah i'll tell you like in the beginning years i i used to be very baniya like right though i'm a brahmin at you know, um, by birth i used to say that you know let's save money let's not spend money let's make money in every transaction um let's make at least 2% money in every transaction so that we have at least 1% left in the company i used to say it to every investor every single vendor every single employee and people used to say eh, kaisi baatein kar raha hai yaar <laughs> tu abhi nikla hai i mean my first round was uh, was a raise of 25 crores there 25 crore tere paas bank mein pada hai kaisi baatein kar raha hai choti choti baatein i remember going to one very you know um, a very uh, Known VC firm and the guy <laughs> who's uh, was the MD was a really known. Hey, what the fuck? Wow, how are you talking, dude? <laughs> you sound like a bloody Marwadi. I mean, Marwadis don't get funded. They get funded by Marwadis. I'm not a Marwadi, right? So, so, <laughs> so I changed. I said, okay, let me now sound a little bit more visionary, right? Yeah. So in the next meeting that I went to, uh, which was with my own team members, I sounded very visionary, and they, they were like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? This is not you anyway. <laughs> so. Uh, I think I attempted to make change with with horrible results, right? So uh, because I'm a very you can see me, yeah. I'm an extreme guy, right? So uh, completely one end of the spectrum, right? Uh, violet or red, whatever you call it, right? So I think I would be more audacious if I I had this wisdom. I I did have this wisdom, by the way. I didn't believe in it that much. I I, I think even today, whenever I'm asked that, you know, what does it take to take for an entrepreneur to be successful or be yourself i think i I've, i've been myself for 80% of the time i would be more wow that's incredible why do you say wow no i mean i think that's i would not have expected that to be the answer uh, to be yourself because maybe because fundamentally i believe that intrinsically people need to change significantly to um aim for the moon but you're saying that's not the case No, to aim for the moon, you need to be yourself. To last in a relationship, you need to change. So, if I have to be good friends with uh, my better half in both professional and personal life, I need to change and adapt to her styles. But if I have to be a great guy myself, I need to be myself. I think if you have to la, if you have to last in a society, you need to change. You need to adapt. But if you have to be successful, you need to be yourself. at the core of it i am still the same <clears throat> katak guy who is kind of driving that cycle and trying to get into those white spaces so that he gets to his destination quickly irrespective of the scratches that it takes on the way okay. i'd like to be more of it if you if you if you're a 24 year old in, in india today with a very high conviction idea ha huh. uh and we've not spoken we've not spoken about debt versus equity but i feel by the way fundamentally that businesses can be built with zero equity funding with just revenue and debt funding if you are disciplined enough i got to build bombay shaving company in like funding it with revenues and debt from day one it's and not it's a great notion to have not possible today why not well two reasons or you compromise on timelines that's it no, or sorry may not be i think it's a utopian idea to begin with for the simple reason that at a very early stage debt is just not available and hence you compromise on timelines you compromise on the amount of hardship you compromise on the amount of stress it will give you it you compromise on almost the every essence on which business is made at early stage debt is not available that's the that's the reality of what at we have at what point do you think you can say that debt and revenue should fund me for it for when you're profitable when you when you're making enough money to fund your growth 
if you are saying you need to grow by 30% you need to generate a return on capital of close to about 17 to 18% correct to actually make sure that 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 30% is funded by your own growth means i think that that time you you can you can afford to have the audacity to say that i don't need equity anymore according to me i have been an investor in public markets there are in my opinion not more than 20 companies who actually demonstrate that today 20 for all of india Wow. No, I agree. So to get there, everybody needs equity. You need equity. The reason you need equity is, is, is five reasons. First reason, the reason you need equity is because it's just more available at an early stage. Correct. This is what I was talking about. Correct. Second, you need equity because you need... More so today than before. Yes. Second, you need people to critique you. You need people to ask you the questions that you likely are not going to be asked by yourself or people who are... Yes, sayers around you. You need people to question you. Ashish, I think uh, uh, coming to what next, right? I think you've done in five, six years at right, off business what most, if you, if you just take a step back and think about all enterprises that have been built post-industrial revolution, like post-1895, for example, right? You've done in five years, which maybe 0.001% of businesses could dream of. Um, and done it with 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 uh, in a shared way, right? It's, it's not unlike a lot of Indian businesses that kind of concentrate wealth at the top. You have done it in a way that is more philanthropic, in if I could call it that, uh, with a certain um, grace and elegance that uh, comes with uh, balancing growth and profitability. You have raised capital, of course, like tremendous amounts of it, upwards of a billion dollars. Uh, but still, you know, kind of you you are very humble and matter of fact in the way you have done it. And I think off businesses extremely successful will become more successful. You guys will go public and so on. I think the institution will become bigger than you uh, and already has in some way. And I think you're that's how you're moving. Right? <laughs> uh, but what next? I think that's that. That's what like I remember some people kind of uh, telling me that however big your association becomes, that association should be one of 10 things in your in your arsenal. And I think a very senior partner at McKinsey told me that McKinsey is one of 10 things that is my identity. It's not my identity even though I've spent 30 years here. It's one of 10 things because I've spent my time doing 9 other things very well and uh, even though it may not have been my full-time pursuit um, whether it's a musical passion whether it's investing in entrepreneurs whether it's uh, philanthropy whatever it is but for you um, you have built as an individual as an individual as you and Ruchi as a unit as parents um, and as as people who are as clearly from this conversation goes right people who are influencing so many people at off business, your vendors, partners, your customers, and people like me who just kind of are close to your journey and, and cheerleading uh, you on and beyond. But you're still, you're only 41, right? Uh, and you have, like, I think the life expectancy for people like us is another 50 years away, which is a, more than half your life is still left, product, most of it productive, most of it with a sound mind which will get more and more experienced. I know about the wisdom energy uh, graph, right? When you're young, you have a lot of energy, very low wisdom. When you're old, you have a lot of wisdom, very low energy. When the time you have both wisdom and energy, earlier would be very small. Then you would have, but for you, I'm assuming a large part of your remaining life will be high on both wisdom and increasing and remain high on energy for a long time. So where do you want to spend your time? How do you think about how to be productive? What will give you excitement? I think what gives me a lot of excitement, at least right now, I've always had this inkling, but I think I have the ammunition right now to act on it, is the fact that, you know, can I be or can we be catalyst to people achieving more than what they were destined to be or what they were made out to be? So can we make people earn more than what they should have? Can we make people more successful than what the stars told them to be? 
can we make people achieve a lot more than what they had ever thought out to be i think can we be the catalyst to i mean money is one part wisdom is another energy is another one i think our job as people who've kind of created some value for themselves is now to create value for others and value to me the definition is that you will always get to some value by yourself can i inflect that journey and if i can do that for people within the institution the institution will go if i can do it for people within the community i think the community will go i think if i can do it for people within the country the entire country will go so can i inflect other people's journeys which is why when you asked me that do i have time i said i have a lot of time because fundamentally that is the big contribution that we can do to uh, us <clears throat> as individuals as a part of society where we have to give back we have to give back what we learned to people around us so that they inflect their journeys everybody has a linear growth can we make it non linear that's my responsibility that's my aspiration and that's what i will be remembered by i if i make a lot of money if i am very successful it doesn't really matter but how many successful people have i made who were likely not going to be that as successful as they today are is what i'll be measured by way after i'm gone i think that is what and i i i actually picked it up from two people i i learned it from mahatma gandhi uh, i don't remember the book i think it was my experiments with truth where he speaks about this and nelson mandela where he speaks about this where he says that hey i'm in this prison cell can i actually still influence the same way as i used to so i think that element of me is getting stronger as i as i pass my years and uh, that's something where i would love to spend my time how would you do it like of course for example with people like me who are entrepreneurs looking up to you it is by spending time with, with the team problem solving maybe investing giving more of my time to what i think is adding value to just me there are many things that i can do today which actually add value to me but there are many things that i can do to which actually makes more value for others i think doing more of the latter is what i would like to prioritize today you and won't believe it i go to every single interview that i'm called for every single interview i don't think anybody has that record so i think it's about giving time time is what generally people uh, generally people who've made something in life don't have i think i pride on the fact that i have a lot of time and Despite it's for the take have you handling 50 customers in one go being a sales person that i have to do anyway hands on that's incredible man like and you're a father like you're you're a father it's necessary. you're 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 now how do you how do you do that like how do you how do you give enough time to your to your to to being a father because i don't waste time uh i think uh, i i'm in love with the japanese for having created this concept of saying that you know what if you waste less um you will always have time to do more so i don't waste time you don't do any netflix movies oh i do a lot of netflix movies uh, as so long as people tell me hey, time then uh, time according to me is where i am just thinking about random stuff and it's not aligned with what i want to do i i want to have fun so i i do uh, movies. netflix movies i think uh, i've seen almost every netflix movie that has got released in the one year in the last year and has been spoken about so uh, i don't waste time even if i'm on the move i i try to do something so and i think people in general have a lot of time it's just that they devote a lot of they either waste that time or they devote a lot of that time to yourself i want to do a lot for others right now it sounds like a very utopian not me like kind of thought but yeah that's oh, it's amazing it's amazing i think more and more entrepreneurs successful entrepreneurs or success, success, successful people entrepreneurs or otherwise if they if they give their time to to younger people who want to be like them i think the delta that can be created uh, is far more than we can imagine yeah i have been shaped by 5 10 minute influences from people who are super inspiring to me then any classroom program any tuition any competitive exam preparation any client engagement at mckinsey or any long term effort at bombay sharing company genuinely mm-hmm. for me 80% of my influence is probably a collection of 30 5 minute moments with 
inspirational people. So that's one fifty to one eighty minutes in a thirty five year lifespan, which has influenced me more than my than that than the rest of the rest of my life. Yes. So if you can maximize that for people you touch, I think that's I think that's 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 exponential in terms of impact. Yeah. I think everybody has a story to be told. I think. Uh, it's just about discerning that story and making it available for everyone that you touch is what will define you in the future. I truly believe that. Uh, I think that's what people should be measured by. So personal success is, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, it's necessary, but on the sufficiency scale, it's passe. Yeah, I agree. Mean, you won't be satisfied. Yeah, I think it may be sufficient for most, but for for extraordinary people, it it's nowhere close. I think you will... Maslow's hierarchy is not built for extraordinary people. It's built for the ordinary. I think there are three, four layers above which, which are spiritual in nature, which are... Uh, which it doesn't go to. Which it doesn't go to. And that's fine. But I think we need to recognize it, that we need to kind of keep going up. And it's amazing to see you on that journey. Um, what about you? The older I'm growing, I agree with you. The older I'm growing, um, and the lesser I'm worried about the safety of my future self, financially and otherwise, right? There are two things that um, that are becoming more and more important to me. One is uh, the absolute happiness of my core family, right? My younger brother, um, who's uh, who came out as gay, lives in the US, is the smartest human being I've ever met. PhD from Stanford, IIT Bombay topper, gold medalist, just incredible human being, just such a nice guy, but just socially in a world which is which is challenging. But I want him to be happy, you know, in whatever way. Um, earlier, I, I've known this for now 12 years. It didn't matter to me so much who he was dating or whether he wants to be a dad or whatever. Now it does. And I want to make it happen for him. Like whatever he needs, he's, he's a quant guy at a hedge fund earning a lot of money, living on the West Coast in a beautiful apartment. He lives a great life. But still, I just feel that he, I, my acute awareness of the fact that he should not be alone is increasing. My parents are getting older in Pune. They live alone. Both their kids are away from home. COVID has kind of made me aware of the fact that they're getting older. Um, so, just making their life easier, visiting them much more often. Um, Making sure that they get the best of me today uh, and the best of my life today is important. So for me, like just making my family, uh, the family that I grew up with, happiest, as happy as possible through money or otherwise, um, through money or time. That's the only, the only currency I actually can, can operate with, right, is important. Second thing is you're right. I think making people successful. I don't know one, uh, someone told me this, right? Identify good people. Do everything you can to make them successful. Explicitly tell them that they better do the same for good people they meet and the world becomes a better place. Yeah. Right? So Tough for, one to pull off, but very hard. So to find good people, whether in BSC, alums, outside, vendors, investors, hires, whoever, um, Make them as successful as you can make them in your capacity and kind of stretch that every every time you are asked. What you do, like I, I don't do that. Like I, I am assuming that I don't even get invited to like one tenth the number of invitations that you get in terms of meeting people. But because even I that, agree to go to them. I don't, I, even in my small, small universe of invites, I probably will do like, I got this fortune 40 under 40. There's an award ceremony in Bangalore. It's Bangalore. It's an airport away, right? They're paying for my flights, hotels, etc. It's still a question mark. Should I go there? Is it worth my time, etc. But I now feel like listen, and talking to you validates that a lot, right? If I can share what I know, and maybe I might trivialize, trivialize it in my head, but if I can share what I know and it can help the other person, um, I need to do it. Because there's nothing else I can do which will be more worthwhile than this. Unless there's a really high bar. Because there's something really important I need to do at that, at that very moment. So I can't come. But I don't do that, right? 
हम लेके यार सैटरडे शाम को जाना है दिस लाइकली बी सम सोशल प्लान इन डेली कान को लेट आई कैंसिल इट एंड आई से नो आई एम सॉरी इट्स टू बिजी लाइक यू नो रियली हैव अ ग्रेट इवेंट प्लीज सेंड मी फोटोग्राफ्स ऑन व्हाट्सएप यू नो बट आई वांट टू डू मोर ऑफ दैट एंड योर कन्वर्सेशंस विद यू वाज काइंड ऑफ टोल्ड मी दैट आई नो ऑल नो ब्रांड्स आर पीआर सो ही नोस एग्जैक्टली व्हाट व्हाट आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट राइट दैट बट या दोस टू थिंग्स लाइक टेकिंग केयर ऑफ माय फैमिली एंड मेकिंग गुड पीपल डिस्प्रोपोर्शनेटली सक्सेसफुल विद मोर टाइम एडेड देन आई कुड Yeah, on the second one i have a tip for you i think i think the moment you stop asking what's in it for me is when you kind of you know go all out i think that question kind of uh, pretty much plays on our minds a lot when we are investing something yeah. it's when you drop that uh, that you uh, kind of you know you will be on your path a lot more yeah hard to do man ah it's very hard to do very hard to hard do hard to do like it's very it's so easy to dismiss there's no cost no yeah there's no cost there's no cost there's no reputational cost there's no financial cost there's no cost there's no time cost nothing saying no is easy people have told you no they'll yeah. understand any which saying no is not is is please say no more no bolo yaar tumko bolna padega tumhara you're too busy founders business chalana hai mat karo ye sab very little time for personal self so yeah No, I know so what you're saying. I've gone through that journey. <laughs> so, but I I need to change that. So, I think the I believe. Why do you need to change that? I genuinely believe that the more people I interact with, the more the better they are, better off we both are for that interaction. Right. For example, if I'm sitting in an aeroplane, if I'm sitting next to someone, sitting quietly for three hours is by far the worst outcome. Yeah. You know, like sure. but having a conversation, yeah, it doesn't matter. That person can be a photographer. That person can be a journalist that person can be an engineer could be whatever you're better off for an awkward conversation with awkward silences than you are with 3 hours of silence so so just have the bloody conversation and and get over with it and and just live that philosophy for the rest of your life and even if you change like five lives it's disproportionate yeah true when anyway, on that note um i know it's been a while uh, but ashish uh, just amazing to have you on the barber shop um privilege is all mine um uh, and to to hear your stories to hear your um perspectives on such a varied range of topics um has been a privilege for me i we, i know we are friends and we, we interact socially a lot but to get 2 3 hours just one on one um, the least i can do is is amazing so thank you so much this has been an absolute privilege thank you so much if i've contributed to your journey in every in any any significant way i'll be very very happy no i think I, I, and it it won't end here it will probably go on for longer thank you so thank much. you so much thank you thank you thanks awesome